Thank you, um, Brother Ambaka. Um, he has asked me to give my, my own profile. It is well, I will. Um, I was telling the first service, it may not be as elaborate as the one that was for the late uh, Professor Magoha, but all the same, it is a profile, isn't it? Yes, it doesn't fall short of a profile. Kwani, what does a profile entail? Name, gender, marital status? Those ones, eh? Okay. So my name is Agnes Mongai. I am born again. Christ is my savior. I, I am a member of this congregation. I serve as an elder in Sitam Eldoret. And in the greater Sitam Fraternity, I sit on the Council of Elders. Uh, I am a girl, and I'm married to uh, Mr. Mungai. And for sure, Mungai is uh, uh, of the opposite gender, and we thank God. Munachaka, udimwengo metufikisha hapo. Because you must be very sure of what you are talking about. Um, between us, we have two children. We have a boy and we have a girl. And uh, they are grown up now. Um, they have given us grandchildren, uh, three of them. The oldest grandchild is 14. Then there's a 10-year-old. And uh, you know sons stay home longer. So my son got married not long ago. Now he has a 10-month-old baby. And uh, I thank God for them. Uh, in the marketplace, I am a teacher by profession and employed by the government. Uh, that is Teacher Service Commission. I am a teacher at Kibabi Diploma Teachers Training College, where I serve as the deputy principal. So that's a bit of my profile. I want to appreciate the leadership of uh, this assembly for allowing me even to occupy their space and share with us the word of God. And today I'm going to share about thirst for uh, revival. And even as I share this word, I want to really appreciate God for the rains. If there's anything that we as Kenyans have longed for, have thirsted for, uh, was rains. Our cattle in our, uh, our brothers who are in the northeastern parts of our country lost quite a lot because of the hunger and the drought that uh, was seen. And uh, now that the rains have come in, we give him all the honor and glory. And uh, rains are a blessing. And we are telling God, according to his word, blessings of God maketh rich, they do not add sorrow. So even for what happened over the news yesterday, where there was mudslides mud and uh, lives being lost together in, in the flood, we are telling God, remember that your blessings make it rich, they do not add sorrow. And may the Lord forgive us because we are being told some of these things are out of our own making. When you block the path of the river, the waters may not know where to flow and they will flow where there is room. When we burn charcoal and we cut down trees uh, we, and, and ignoring, ignoring the, the effects of uh, deforestation, then uh, these, some of the things end up with us. So may the Lord help us and forgive us that it will be well, it will be well. I long for the day that the weather patterns, the climatic patterns would be renewed would be back to what it was. Where I was born by 13th of February, and for sure, rains would be there. In March, like now, we would be eating that, that this in Luya we call Likalava. Luya's in the house, do you know Likalava? Someone who knows Likalava? Yes, they know. Uh, you only need to boil. Nonega kachumfi, na unakula, 
ugali. And then by April, green maize and green beans. By June, tuna, we are roasting maize. And that is what we used to have year in, year out. For now, I don't even know which season it is. Do we plant? Do we not plant? Uh, my husband told me at a sijarima, Nambia hapa mamvua yuko, labda ututachelewa. Nasema apana kuja, huko nyandaro bado, so at a sijarima in the first place. So this is where we are. But God is good in all situations. Allow me to go through our topic of discussion this morning. Um, thirst for renewal. Thirst for renewal. This is drawn from uh, Psalms chapter 42, verse 1 to 4. We could read up to verse 6, but I will concentrate on verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as, as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Praise the Lord. Now, there are, uh, uh, as I begin, some few definitions here and there. We'll be referring a lot to this animal called the deer. Uh, we are used to goats, sheep, cows, donkeys. Uh, but in the uh, wilderness, we have uh, uh, this one's called deer there. And um, we will also be talking about the deer and some few terms that I shall be referring to even as I move on with my discussion uh, this morning. Now, this is what I got um, about the deer. Now, we are told that the deer only pants when it is being chased by a predator. So when the predator is not there, it's busy eating the grass and feeling refreshed and feeling at peace and uh, um, not in any challenge. But when a predator is chasing it and as soon as the deer escapes and knows that it is safe, it will immediately look for water to renew its strength. So it doesn't buy time or look is to the left, what it does, so long as it's out of uh, uh, danger, it looks for water. That water renews its strength. Then it can continue grazing. So it means that when it is running, after being or while it is being chased by the predator, the, it gets overwhelmed, it gets dehydrated. And we are told that if the deer runs for too long from an enemy and it cannot get to water, that deer can collapse and die. So the only savior for this deer, especially when it's out of sight of the predator, it is the water. The water renews its strength. The water renews its vitality. The water makes it go back to normal again. Without that water, the deer collapses and dies. So there are two words that have been used there that I would want us to look at them even as we go on. We have the panting. And uh, we are told that panting is a desperate need for something very vital. And for a deer, when it pants, no, there, it's a desperate need for water, as I have indicated there. Now, we are not uh, uh, conversant with the panting. It's uh, uh, normal with the animals, as we are conversant with thirst. Thirst is a strong desire for uh, our water so that 
you are relieved of that strong desire. It is a craving. It is a hunger. It is a very deep desire for water. And when you get water, when you are thirsty, for sure you don't sip. You don't sip. You sip something when you are relaxed. When you have eaten your fill, and uh, you can even do without that that you want to sip. But when you are thirsty, you want water. And uh, you don't want little water. You want water that you will gulp down the throat without interruption. So that is the, the image that I would want us to look at or to have in our thoughts. This strong craving for water to relieve you of your dehydration, to hydrate you once more so that you can arise and go on and do your things. When you have taken a glass of water, you sit back and there's something that you, you do. You say, ah. So that, ah, after the relief, is what I want us to address today. Because that one now refreshes you. You feel renewed. You feel you can now go on again. You feel you can proceed. You are energized. You can go to any other thing. Thirsting. And that's why in the uh, um, uh, Bible quotation, the psalmist says, as the deer pans for streams of water, so my soul pans for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. So as we thirst for water, because again, when you are thirsty, do you eat ugali? No. When you are thirsty, you don't even want to go for the hard, good meal, however good and delicious it looks from the serving table. What you want is that glass of water. So there are no two ways about it. It's very clear in your mind that I am thirsting and my relief is a glass of water. Now, um, we, I will also be mentioning the term renewal, and I've been mentioning it, that when you have taken that water, you feel now renewed again. Now, renewal, will be using this term just to refer to a new appearance, to refresh, to restore, to establish more firmly or to re-establish, to rebuild, to repair. And it, it can be anything that you are refreshing. It can be your physical life. It can be your spiritual life. It can be your marital life. It can be your place of work. It can be your business. It can be anything that is capable of being given a new appearance, a new freshness, a new restoration. It can be re-established afresh. It can be rebuilt. It can come out. So we are seeing the refresh, restore, re-establish, rebuild, meaning that there used to be some newness at one particular time. But maybe because of the harsh realities of life, that newness that used to be there has been distorted. That freshness that was once there has been you know, uh, interfered with and what you have at hand is a sorry state. And we are asking ourselves, is it repairable? Can these broken bones that I'm seeing ever come back to life? Will my marriage ever work again? Will my children ever live like human beings? Will my husband ever walk like a man out there? You know, sometimes mpaka tunawauliza, na wae ni mwanaume kweli? Na hao wanatuliza na wewe ni mwanamke kweli na tunaanza kuulizana na hao ni vijana kweli na tunaanza kuulizana are these children or they are robots what we are saying now that former state of issues of our lives of the state of our businesses and they have undergone the harsh realities of life especially post covid era we are asking ourselves can these things be renewed? 
Can my life be ever be renewed? Can my family, can my circumstance ever be renewed? And this is what we want to ask of the Lord this morning. Now, Psalms 42, where we have read, the psalmist felt very exhausted. He had been pursued by enemies. He felt worn out. He knew there was only one person that would save him. But even that help was not forthcoming. It felt very far away. God seemed very far away. And every day the longing to have his situation rectified, intensified each and every day. No wonder he says, it felt like a deer panting for water. Now these words are used by a person who lived in the wilderness those days that were not in the big posh uh, houses like we have today. So he had seen the very animals, how they behave and what have you, and he could relate with the deer uh, depending on the situations that he was in. He craved for a solution. He craved that things would turn up the other way and go back to the former way. The Lord seemed not forthcoming. No wonder he's asking, when will I meet my God? Not when will I meet the king? If anything, he was even running away from the king. He's asking, when will I ever meet the Lord? Because in his life, in his situation, he knew that the only savior there was God. We may be asking ourselves, Kwani, what had happened to David? Now, when you think and study the life of David, in as much as he was a mighty man of God, one whose heart was after God's heart, I'm telling you, he went through things. He was suffering persecution by Saul. Whatever David would do, it would be blessed. You know, he was the anointed of the Lord. So the favor of the Lord was always on him. No wonder he was now attracting uh, bitterness from the so-called kings. They would find David the favored of the Lord. Ushawa Yikuwana, you've just been given some promotion at your place of work. And uh, everybody now turns to be an enemy. You are not, they are not greeting you. They, they, they are not even eating together with you at lunchtime. Just because you got a promotion, a favor of the Lord somewhere. So you just keep it to yourself. This is what Saul was going through. Facing persecution from the powers of the day. And uh, what hurt David uh, uh, most is being uh, prevented from returning to the sanctuary in Jerusalem. There were so many things happening. There, there's uh, fighting happening here. There's something, a war here. And he would be restricted from proceeding to Jerusalem. And we know what Jerusalem meant for the Israelites. Jerusalem was where God dwelt. It was the presence of God. And it is where that every Israelite would want to go together with the others, a place where they would worship the Lord. And in the moment of worshiping the Lord, they would make a prayer request. And that prayer request would be one, for the peace of Jerusalem. And secondly, for the posterity of the same. So being told you are not going, or situations dictating that you can't go to Jerusalem, that was the most agonizing thing for an Israelite and one who knows God, like David himself. He now was crushed within him because he could not go to be refreshed again as they wait for another season to go to Jerusalem. Absence from his usual worshiping community was very disheartening. He felt rejected. He felt very, very low. And as if that is not enough, David had issues even with his own household. And of particular uh, mention, because of time, is Absalom. 
his own son. Absalom sought to kill his father. He would plan and he would kill and he wanted to uh, finish his father because of reasons best known to Absalom and David, the father. Now, when we look at these things, they are, we are familiar with them. We can resonate with them. Many are the times that we have undergone through very depressing scenarios within ourselves, within our families, within our marketplaces, even within the house of God. And we are crying day in and day out. We are desperate for a solution that does not seem to be coming. However much we are being encouraged to hold on there, it is like this thing is not working. I want out. I want out. And our patience is being put to test. We are talking about men who after COVID, in this post-COVID era, their businesses are not doing well anymore. Their social standing is not doing well anymore. And you just know men with their ego. When their ego has been put to test, ni wanaume tu tunaona wamevaa trousers na wamepiga makoti wako hapa na wanakusalimia and you think it is well. You know the way they were wired. Their tears go inside there. And when they are talking, they don't talk about failures. They talk about concrete things. And uh, they are not like, ladies, we will talk about our husbands, maramoja na yu inaisha. Men, do you talk about your wives with other men? I normally listen when men come to visit my husband. Sijawai kusikia mutu akisema, motumia wakwari. Sijasikia. But when my husband is eavesdropping, we, when I'm talking to my neighbor, Mama Kamau, I, he will hear me tell Mama Kamau, Ngai moduli wakwa dano, yani akukuja mapema jana, sijiku mekuaje. And then he tell me, okumweragatia. You know, yeah, that, that is how they, they are wired. They are strong. May the Lord bless them with their strength. But you see again, thank you, Pastor. So the men are saying, indeed, they are resonating with what David is going through. It's not bread and butter in their lives. What they go through, their, their marital status, at their places of work, at their marketplaces, things are not working out anymore. Now, I was telling the first service, where I am married, you, a man would go home and find the door wide open. The sofa set in the sitting room, gone. The bed in the bedroom, gone. The 13 kilos gas cylinder and the gas cooker, gone. All the sufurias, gone. The junior baby girl, gone. The junior baby boy, gone. Then he goes out to ask the neighbor, Mumewana Mama Junior. And the neighbor will tell him, Hey, see, I did Mumehama. That means, Aliondoka, Alienda. And where I'm married, Akiondoka namna hiyo, signs of ever coming back are nil, are zero. Akienda na watoto, Ameenda. Sasa wa utaanza tena kutafuta na wanze, and you are a believer. Until she dies, you remain unmarried. You can imagine that. And ladies, hata kama ni kuwapiga fimbo, tunawapiganga sana. May the Lord help us. Tunapiga tu kidogo, lakini sio ire mbaya. The ladies where are married are not like the where, where somewhere, somewhere else. Where it is in, out, in, apart, in, out, over, apana. Hawa kiondoka, wameondoka. But even for the ladies, so you can imagine that man who is left like that. What is happening in his mind? The tears that are at usingizi hapati. Because a man without a job and without a family, however, I don't know even whether he listens to any song. No wonder they go into uh, alcohol abuse and all that. Women were also not left behind. 
You know the way we are supposed girls, you must behave like this, girls, you must behave like this, and then at 23, we are getting married, then you are told you must shape up. Wewe ni mama, sasa unaka kama mama, ni sawa sawa. And then by, when, I when I give birth to boys, ni naambiwa unazawa, wanaume, shamba itatoka wapi. Aya, ah, yeah, it's okay. Now when I give birth to girls, now you are giving birth to girls, who, where will, who will succeed? Who will succeed this family? Who will inherit this property? Okay, ni sawa. Now when I reach 50, I'm told now I'm too old. Mzee anataka ndogo ndogo. Now I thought now at, at this age I will be settling. Nothing happening at uh, that. When I'm not bearing children, now I don't even want to go there. You become a scone. Nobody wants even to greet you, lest you, co con con you know, contaminate the hand of the one that is greeting you. Young people are also not left behind. Nobody understands them. I was glad last Sunday when they, I came here for the worship concert. There were so many young people filling up this place, worshiping the Lord, lifting up their voices. And I was like, my Blessed are these young people who can come in a church like this and the whole afternoon they are just dancing. And I didn't mind their dancing styles. I was here as the elder. When I do like they're doing like this, they've already moved 10 steps ahead. But I said it's well so long as you are dancing and doing that in the house of the Lord. Because the young people, it's like their lives have been written off. We don't expect anything to good to come out of the young people in the society that we are living in now. And I'm, I'm telling you, young people are crying within themselves. They are asking, who will listen to us? Who will hear us? But again, when you go to the young people, basi nieleze, niambie, nijue. Ana kwambia hata hutajua. So, na, so nieleze, nitajua. Na hata kijua huta understand. So you are like, huwezi kujua, na kujua huwezi kuunderstand. That tells you that within them, they are craving for something. They are craving for something and that's like, who will hear us? Who will understand us to save us from this quagme? I told you I am the deputy principal and discipline cases end on my desk. And before I send the student away for two weeks, I will have built up a case against the student. And there are pathetic cases. There are cases that will tell you the mother was not there, the father was not there, the drug came in, and so forth. So they are crying out. The young men are crying out, the young ladies are crying out, they want somebody to listen. That's when I lock the door and tell the student, sit here, tell me. And in my desk I have this, I've told the chief principal, just buy them for me, for not for toileting. So that the tears, yes, and, and, and so forth. By the time they leave, even if they will serve the two weeks suspension because of other things, they come back and they are refreshed. Somebody listened to them. And the young people are like that. They, 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 unfortunately, they are running helter-skelter, looking for someone to understand them and to listen to them. The young ladies, the young women, we are busy Googling how to conceive a baby boy. We are busy buying books online. What do men need in women? And the men are also busy reading those books. How to make rich, how to, 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 to make wealth very fast, you know? Because we think that is what is supposed to be. And we are running a helter, skelter, north, south. Unakutana na huyu, naenda hii conference. Hii conference, oh, there are people, uh, sujui nini, uh, they, they are selling uh, uh, produce of how to remain young. So, una, una meza hii madawa, una koroga kahawa, una, eh, coffee has been there since time immemorial. People have never stayed fresh and, 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 and rem hey, and, and you look at the mama, she is 50 years like me. And we are trying to, to sell those beauty products. They are called what supplements, vitamin, calcium, something <laughs> to keep. This is what I call panting. You are panting. 
You are thirsting for something, but you are running in the wrong direction. The deer does not run in the wrong direction. It runs going to a river valley where there are streams of water, where they will be renewed, where they will be refreshed. Where you are going online, you are going Google, you are going to Wapi, you are going to Elder. You are going to go to town. We are, uh, you know, business of how products and, and so forth. Hey, hallelujah. This elder will run to the streams of the living water. It is the Lord that will renew your youth. Because he says he will renew your youth, isn't it? Not the Google products. Not the online books. What men want in women. Simply ask your husband, Mungai unataka nikufanyie nini? And ask your, your, uh, ask your, your wife uh, what you want. What she wants, you as a man. Me, women who are there, let us not make ourselves easily dispensable in our families, in our marriages. It is until death do we, do we part. Sasa wa uko hapo, machine, kama ni nguo, machine, kama ni nyumba, house girl, kama ni chochote, dry cleaner, wako uko inje. Even when you leave your home, they don't miss you. Umeenda. Ear in, out, in, apart, in, out, over. For a child of God. Apana. Itakuja kukumiza. Inataka unaka ngumu. Unaendako tu inje. Kakasha nini kikisu ama panga. Unakatako tu fence. So that even the neighbors know. Even when the fence. Yani just to affirm your two feet. Mahala pale. So that when like I go away over the weekend to attend council matters. Mungai should be calling and finding me. Udifika. Ume utarudi lini. Yeah, because his food has not been prepared. And I'm the only one who prepares that food. So that we don't get things uh, going helter skelter. While we are doing the helter skelter, this is where now mental issues are coming in. Because when you are moving to that meeting, when you are moving to that Google, when you are moving to that site, what is happening in your mind? You are not thinking right. You are thinking of remedies. And some of those remedies can be mind boggling, can be very distracting. And the trending thing nowadays is mental wellness. I'm telling even Teacher Service Commission, we are taken through a whole week mental wellness. Even when we teach, we are teaching our teacher trainees about mental wellness. And even in church, we are preaching about mental wellness just to see whether these minds can be settled together because unless there is some settlement of your mind together, you can't think right. People who have mental issues have even gone and committed suicide. They have killed one another. And it doesn't matter. A child will kill the parent. You remember Absalom was after the life of his father. Husbands will murder their wives. Wives will murder their husbands. It is left, right, center. You can't actually trace it. When the mind is not... And you know, when, you are, when we gave birth to you or when you are given birth to, you had a fresh mind. You, everything about you was just fresh. So when we talk about renewal, we are talking about the renewal of your mind, the way it was, it used to be, so that you can think right and even um, um, think about solutions to your um, problems. Now the enemy knows and is very good. And we call him the taunting enemy. And he knows that you are a child of God. You know, sometimes you, we wonder whether people who are not born again, do they get issues like the ones we go through? You know? It's like, nisisi tutu na utunaandamanoa na haya maneno. And uh, the enemy, after pursuing you, will even ask you, where is your God? Not because of anything. Just to test your faith. To make you doubt about your God, to make you l l see that this God is very far away, Hayuko Hapa. And uh, these things happen throughout the Bible story. You remember the exiles by the river of Babylon 
Wako hapo wanalia. They have gone through loss. They, have, they are away from home. They are down by the river of Babylon. They have even hung up their, their, their musical instruments. And by the way, sometimes when you go through those difficulties, we even hung up our musical instruments. Sasa hata kama ulikuwa ni kwa yalida, wimbi, shida zimekubana. Kama ulikuwa HOD, now you don't come. Shida zimekubana. That is the scenario of the Israelites by the river of Babylon. They had hung up their musical instruments. Of course, they, it was challenging. But the enemies are there. They are coming. Hello, please sing us the Lord's song. How do we sing the Lord's song in that strange environment? So you are in that scenario and it's like you are being told. So and so please lead us in a, 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 a prayer, opening prayer. And huna mbele, huna nyuma, bibi alienda, bwana alienda, watoto ni bangi na kira kitu. How do you even start the Lord's? You can't even do the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Haiwezi kutoka. Na wanajua haiwezi kutoka, but they are telling you, sing us the Lord's song. You know, to ridicule you, to let you know that you are under our feet, we are the ones manipulating your life. Job, in the Bible, the friends told him, Bwana, it, ni mungu wako, wa, you just curse your God, including his wife. Curse your God and die. You know, women, you are very... We are very, very easy to tell our men that. Akuja leo bila job. Kesho bila job. Kesho yangine bila job. Hey, unamambia tu kimoja kikubwa hivi. Job aliambiwa, curse your God and die. Jesus was also mocked by his enemies, even at the cross. Save yourself and save us too. Aren't you the son of God? You see now you are on the cross. And even those that are also supposed to be hung together with you, save yourself and also save me. That taunting enemy. And uh, in the book of Daniel, there's nothing against Daniel that we can ever get. But we can only look for something that is related with his faith. So the, his spirituality had been born, uh, uh, put to test. You are an elder, umefanya kazi vizuri, and your daughter gets pregnant in form two. Now it will not be about the pregnancy of that girl in form two. It will be the elder. What has it to do with being an elder that your daughter got pregnant? You know, it's just to discredit you that you are preaching to us, you are an elder here, and your own household is not functioning very well. And I also would pray for even the pastors. The children of the pastors, when they are haywire out there in the society, my God, the big things they say about the children of pastors. How wanafanya hivi na baba yao ni pastor. And you are like, can't we even draw a line? They are not pastors. They are just children of pastors. That is what the enemy can do for you. Taunting you. Making you look like good for nothing. You know, your wife runs away, and they will tell you Mungu wake alikuwa wapi when his wife was running away. That is what, how the enemy can taunt us. But I want to thank God. If we go back to Psalms chapter 42, verse uh, 2 to 4 there. Um, I could go back there very fast, yes. The psalmist says, uh, you know, day and night these tears ca came in and uh, there are people saying to him all day long, where is your God? But he says some words there. These things I remember as I pour out my soul. There are things that the psalmist would remember even as he would agonize out of his bitterness, of his situation. There are things he would remember. These things I remember as I pour out my soil. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with the shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Something that I would want you and me to remember. The psalmist remembered 
how they used to go to the house of God, and that was in Jerusalem. Remember, part of the agony he was going through is being restricted to go to the house of God, where there's the presence of God, where they would meet with God, where they would worship the, with God. He remembers Jerusalem. Jerusalem, among the Israelites, stood for something very critical in their spiritual lives. Jerusalem stood for atonement. Jerusalem stood for forgiveness. Jerusalem stood for reconciliation. Jerusalem stood for hope. Jerusalem stood for renewal. Jerusalem stood for atonement. Jerusalem stood for the presence of God. And where I've mentioned in Psalms 137, by the rivers of Babylon, where they had hung up their musical instruments, and they are being tormented, sing us the Lord's song, and they are wondering how do we worship the Lord once more. There's something that comes to their mind, and they say, cast are we if we forget Jerusalem. May the tongue of our mouth stick up to the, the, the upper roof of our mouth if we forget Jerusalem. May the skill of playing these instruments die if we ever forget Jerusalem. So amidst the challenges that they were going through, they remembered Jerusalem. And they remembered Jerusalem as a place of hope. They remembered Jerusalem as a place of restrengthening. They remembered Jerusalem as a place where their lives are renewed. They remembered Jerusalem for life in their situation. And that is exactly what Jerusalem uh, is for David and why David is remembering um, Jerusalem. Now, if we move a little bit early, uh, uh, further because of interest of time, just some two slides there. David longs for the public worship of God. It comes to his mind what they would do in Jerusalem. Now, the pilgrims or the Israelites, when they visited Jerusalem, they were very excited about it. No wonder it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because as I've indicated, there was deliverance in the presence of God in Jerusalem. Now, when they were there, they would worship God. Worshiping God, telling him he's the only savior. He's the only help. He's the only comfort. He's the only source of hope to them. And after immense worship, Remember, the next time they would come to worship would be several months thereafter. So it was not an everyday thing. So with that immense worship, they would do a prayer as I have indicated earlier. The prayer would be for the peace of Jerusalem and prosperity for the same. And I want to imagine David was longing to go before the presence of God so that he prays after he has worshipped. He prays for peace for himself. He was a man running for his life. Brethren, last week, Reverend Mulunda, our, 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 our regional overseer, took us through the indwelling presence of God. We are living at a time when we no, no longer go to the hills. We no longer go to the mountains. We no longer go to specific places. God resides in us. We are uh, the, 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 the temple in whom God dwells. And part of the work that the indwelling presence of God does is to remind us. And how I pray that even as we go through the, the, the daily concerns, the challenges that we have mentioned, that the spirit of God within us will arise and will help us to remember that we have the most high God inside of us, living inside of us. 
And what we only need to do is to worship him, bring him out, exalt his holy name. The Bible does not say that we shall exalt the name of the Lord when things are good. We do not exalt the name of the Lord when a promotion has come. We don't exalt the name of the Lord when we get married. We exalt the name of the Lord in all situations because he is on the throne. And once we have exalted the name of the Lord Most High, he will replenish us. He will revive us. He will come to us. Why? Because they prayed for peace of Jerusalem and prosperity of the same. Once we have worshipped the Lord, we have given him the eminence that he desires. We can now go before the Lord and say, my husband, the peace of my marriage, the peace of my husband, the peace of my children, the peace of my biashara, the peace of my marketplace, the peace of my ministry. Praise the Lord. And not only the peace, the prosperity of the same. So that Jerusalem is there for long. So that your marriage lasts for long. So that my family lasts for long. Whenever I am introducing myself, I say that I want to live and I will live to see the children of the children of the children of my children. Fourth generation. That's what the Bible says. So I want to worship the Lord, and as I want to worship the Lord, I make that prayer request that they were praying for the peace of my family. I, I live in Bungoma, and Mungai lives in Nakuru. I will always tell God, for the peace of that man, now that I'm away, the blanket would be cold, isn't it? For the peace of that man, God bless him, protect him, you know, lift him up. And even at my place of work, for the peace of that institution. Don't you know the Bible says, because you are there, that place will be peaceful. For the peace of this place, Lord, help me to serve and serve you well. So that they will not ask me, now who you, madam? Where is her God? Apana. My Lord dwells in me, and I should replicate the goodness of Lord at my place of work. In my relationship with my peers, I want to pray for the peace of my neighbor. When your neighbor is not at peace, so you pray that God this evening, may my neighbor's, uh, neighbors sleep, sleep well. Because as long as he's not sleeping, you are not sleeping. Even those that are hungry, they will be knocking on your door. And you are like, God provide. Because as long as they have food, there will be no knocking on your door for food that maybe even you, you do not have. So they worshipped before the Lord and they asked of the Lord the peace of Jerusalem and prosperity therein. Brethren, we have the ability to go before the Lord to worship him. He is our living waters. He is the one that we are to thirst for. Not any other place. When we are running helter skelter here, left, south, north, may the Lord renew within us the remembrance so that we remember that we have the living waters within us. We have these living waters that we can come back and drink and we shall be renewed. You come out of there, you are renewed. You are smiling. You are, ashamed, you are, you are greeting people. You, 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 you look, you are fine. Why? Because you know there's a spring of water somewhere that revives you, reju rejuvenates you. You are now stronger each and every day. So even when every other person is crying around about you, your secret is you are always going to the rivers, the living waters. If the worship team is here, as the deer panteth for the water, so my heart and uh, uh, thirsts for you. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Habakkuk verse chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls. Verse 18 is a most beautiful one that I love. Yet, 
I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. That song that says, as the deer panteth for water. Because we are being told here, though the fig trees do not bud, it means that there is a time that the fig tree will not bud. There may not be food in the barn. Things may not be as usual. It will be, there will come some challenging time. The Bible says, yes, however bad the situation would be, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Bible is talking about the feet of a deer. A deer is also has been used here. The panting of the water, for water. And now the deer of the feet that helps the deer to climb up, 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 you know, because the enemy might be suppressed somewhere. But the deer will go height after height, height after height, and when the enemy is out of the situation, the deer goes back to where there was the stream of water to nourish itself up. Brethren, what am I saying here? Maybe God allows us to feel that emptiness or to go through some of those very discouraging moments, to sense the thirst so that we may realize that we can't put our hope in people, in Google, in online, in things, or in experiences, so that we can only know that we can only trust him. It's only when we are with God, when we trust God alone, the living God, will our thirst be quenched with his living water. Young people, the Lord is capable of quenching our thirst. Mamas that are in the house, the Lord is capable of quenching the thirst that we have. The men that are in the house, the Lord is able to quench the thirst. The circumstances that you have, the solution is the living water that we get from God above. As the deer panteth for water, deputy senior pastor.